Okay, moving on to the next segment of today's show. There is one team and one particular quarterback situation that has been in the news as of late that I wanted to talk about, and that is the Pittsburgh Steelers and the question of will they be bringing back Ben Roethlisberger as their starting quarterback next season. And one thing I will say is this. This whole situation comes down to one question, and that is, do the Steelers have any guts? And I'll explain to you throughout this segment exactly what I mean by that. And here's how I'll start things off. You guys remember a couple years ago when that whole Ben McAdoo, Eli Manning fiasco went down with the Giants, when Ben McAdoo benched Eli Manning, and instead of drafting a Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson or a Josh Rosen or a Sam Darnold, the Giants actually decided to draft Saquon Barkley. And that season following the Eli year when he got benched, that was Pat Shermer's first year in New York 2018, the Giants were an absolute disgrace. And it's funny because on paper, they weren't necessarily going to be that bad. They had Eli, they had Saquon, they had Odell. No, that team went 5-11 and and was one of the more disappointing teams in the NFL. And then we know what happened. Eli Manning basically just watched Daniel Jones for a year and then retired. So the Giants let Eli Manning walk out on his own terms, and maybe it's because he's the only quarterback in the history of the New York Giants to start and win two Super Bowls. We know just how great of a quarterback Eli was throughout his career, but I think we can make the argument that Ben Roethlisberger has had a better career than Eli Manning. They both have two Super Bowls. They were both in the same draft. Both have been playing for a really long time. But when you have Eli Manning, look at what happened to the Giants that following season. It ended up blowing up in their face the fact that they decided to pass on a quarterback. And right now, I do think most Giant fans would tell you that they would rather have a Josh Allen or that they would rather have a Lamar Jackson than Daniel Jones. But one thing I will say about the Steelers is this. There have been plenty of other quarterbacks that have been better than Ben Roethlisberger. Guys who are in the conversation for the greatest quarterback of of all time. Tom Brady, Joe Montana, plenty of quarterbacks that came up at the start of their career with one team and then ha- played so well, they ha- they were great, and ultimately got let go. Look at Peyton Manning with the Colts. There are plenty of examples of quarterbacks better than Ben Roethlisberger that their team t- decided, okay, you know what? It's time to move on. And the thing that I find so interesting about this whole situation is the team that we are dealing with here. We are dealing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not only are they a team that gets a lot of national recognition that has one of the larger fan bases in the NFL, but this is a Pittsburgh Steelers team that, let's face facts, they don't fire head coaches. They've had three head coaches since the Nixon administration. They're loyal. That's what they do. That's what they're built on. That's what uh, Dan Rooney built this franchise and based this franchise on. So the Steelers, are they going to realize that as great of a career as Ben Roethlisberger had, I think it is pretty safe to say that when we watched him the last six or so games of the season, he didn't look to me like a quarterback that is going to be able to win a Super Bowl. And it's unfortunate because when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers going into this past season and really in the beginning of the season, one of the reasons why I thought that they could be a legitimate Super Bowl contender, and this was before Big Ben was playing out of his mind, one of those reasons was because I thought that their defense is good enough to carry them in certain games and win them some games. I thought their defense could be that good. We saw a couple years ago this Pittsburgh Steeler team go 8-8 eight and eight with Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph starting a majority of the games when Big Ben got hurt. So the Pittsburgh Steelers, they... I thought had a defense that they could rely on to win as many games as possible. But this past season, they proved that they were not up to the test. 
The Pittsburgh Steelers defense, when you look at the numbers, you're going to see, oh, okay, they have a lot of sacks. They have a lot of interceptions. You look at the guys on paper, TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Joe Hayden, Minka Fitzpatrick, all of those guys. But I feel like in the biggest moments last year, besides the one game against Indianapolis late in the year where they somehow, someway found a way to win, and that was behind the arm of Ben Roethlisberger, not necessarily the defense, I do think that the Pittsburgh Steelers are a team that has to look themselves in the mirror and just flat out say, I don't think we could win a Super Bowl with Ben Roethlisberger as our starting quarterback next year because, one, he showed us towards the back end of last season that he, as a starting quarterback, is not good enough right now to carry a team and win and take advantage of opponent's mistakes and make other guys around him better. And Big Ben was good in the beginning of last season, but that was system-based. He was doing the opposite of what the original Ben Roethlisberger was doing when he was first coming up. And what is that, you ask? Well, he was just getting the ball uh, out of his hands as quickly as possible. Now, a lot of that may have had to do with the fact that the Steelers' offensive line was really starting to decline before our very eyes, but... At the same time, you could just tell in that game against the Cleveland Browns, and I know you're going to look at the numbers and say, what do you mean he threw for four touchdowns and 300 yards and da 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 and I get it. The numbers don't look that bad, but I mean, guys, four interceptions in that game, and I know the snap went over his head to start, but the Pittsburgh Steelers were out of that game before it even really started. And Big Ben Roethlisberger, to me, as great of a career as he had, he didn't look like a quarterback to me that is going to be able to lead his team to a Super Bowl and make other guys around him better. Think about it. Do you think right now Ben Roethlisberger could beat Patrick Mahomes in a playoff game or beat Josh Allen in a playoff game? I don't think so, and when you consider some of the other young hotshot quarterbacks around the AFC that are only going to be getting better, like a Josh Allen, like a Justin Herbert, like a Baker Mayfield, like a Joe Burrow, like a Lamar Jackson, and on and on we go, Deshaun Watson if he stays in Houston, then the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think, are better off by just straight up telling Big Ben Roethlisberger, look, it's been a great run, but unfortunately, we're going to have to move on, and we don't want you as our starting quarterback next year, and he'll have to face it because you know why his contract right now is 41 million that's his cap hit and that's fine when you're at least getting close to the production but the Pittsburgh Steelers were getting nowhere close to that that kind of production that they were paying him within the last handful of games towards the back end of last season so what does that mean I think that Big Ben Roethlisberger at age 39 should not be the Steelers starting quarterback next year because what are you going to do are you just going to... And I totally understand that when you look at some of the Steelers' other options at quarterback, like Mason Rudolph, like Dwayne Haskins, you are not really going to be that impressed. But at the same time, at least you're willing to give them a chance. Why would the Steelers be willing to take a shot on Dwayne Haskins if they never want to at least see what he looked like? Same thing could be said about Mason Rudolph. And I don't think... Uh, either of those guys are are going to be better than Ben Roethlisberger per se, but at the same time, at least you could see what they got, and if it fails, you will be towards uh, the, the path of rebuilding. And to be honest, I think that when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers and the way that their team is constructed right now, I do not think they're a playoff team next year, no matter who their quarterback is. And the only way they're going to get better is if TJ Watt and Minka Fitzpatrick really step up in the big moments and get pressure on the quarterback. And I understand last year, losing Devin Bush and losing Bud Dupree, those were two critical injuries. And if they don't get hurt, maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is just significantly better. Here's the only problem with that though. Bud Dupree is a free agent and odds are he is not going to be back in Pittsburgh. Plus, he's going to be coming off the injury. I like Robert Spillane. I like the kid Haysmith who played well, but you cannot be relying on your defense to win those kind of games like they couldn't do in the playoffs against Cleveland when they just couldn't get the job done last year. I'm telling you, you look at the numbers, you're going to say, oh, their defense wasn't that bad. And it, it was one of the better ones in the league. Obviously, it wasn't bad, but I do think they had a lot to be desired. And there were plenty of clutch moments where they could have came through where they just flat out didn't. And that's why, to be honest, I had no real problem with Aaron Donald winning the Defensive Player of the Year award 
over TJ Watt. I'm a big TJ Watt guy. At first, I wanted him to win, but right now, looking back at it, I have no denial that Aaron Donald is the better player, and he was able to step up in the bigger moments for his team, unlike one TJ Watt. So the pressure's on Mike Tomlin. That's another thing. If I'm the Steelers, I'm telling Mike Tomlin, look, great season. And I remember I said on the show before the season started, if Mike Tomlin and the Steelers missed the playoffs this past season, I would have fired him. So obviously I'm not going to fire him. He's one of the better coaches in the league. But at the same time, if I'm the Steelers, what I'm saying to Mike Tomlin uh, to start off this offseason is this. Ben Roethlisberger is not going to be back next year. And give us the quarterback that you think, or we'll give it to you, whoever is going to succeed well. And that would fit well in your system. I think if I'm the Steelers, what I want to see from Mike Tomlin is a little bit of reassurance that he's still a smart coach. And a little bit of reassurance that he could come up with a legit game plan in order to make his offense better. Because Randy Feekner, he was the offensive coordinator and he was all buddy-buddy with Ben Roethlisberger. That didn't work out. He is no longer here. Now the Steelers are going to be going with Matt Canada as their offensive coordinator. He was their quarterback's coach last year. I'm curious to see what exactly the Steelers' offense looks like with Canada at the helm, no matter who's playing quarterback. And if Big Ben Roethlisberger is back, which according to the Steelers, who released a statement today, by the way, he's going to be back. I really disagree with that move. And I think that the Steelers would be better off letting Big Ben go and going in another different direction at the quarterback position. It could be a move that I think could set them back like the New York Giants a couple years ago when they decided to bring Eli Manning back. They decided to draft a running back and went 5-11 and the next year, drafted a new quarterback, and really wasted some time. I think that if the Giants would have focused more on a quarterback's development like a Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson or Sam Darnold, imagine they're where they would be today. So the Pittsburgh Steelers have a big decision on their hands. Personally, I don't think it's that hard of one to make, but the question is, will they show their guts?